Because of his beautiful, rainbow-colored eyes and pure white hair, Domo is seen as a supernatural being since birth and is groomed into the religious leader of the Paradise Faith Cult, a position he maintains to the present day. When he was still a child, his mother had a mental breakdown and stabbed his father to death for having numerous affairs with other female cult disciples. She committed suicide immediately afterwards by poisoning herself to death. However, despite these series of grueling events happening right in front of him, Doma only felt annoyed by the bloody mess created in the aftermath and was disgusted by the pungent smell of blood. He simply wanted to air out the room before the stench permanently stuck to the furniture. At 20 years old, he met Muzan Kibutsuji, who transformed him into a demon. At some point, Doma became the upper rank 6 of the 12 Kazuki. During that time, while he was roaming around the entertainment district and feasting off the flesh of the geishas and other young maidens, he stumbled across the siblings Gyutaro and Daki, who were both at death's door. Gyutaro had been stabbed in the back and was slowly bleeding to death, while his sister, Daki, had been burned to the point of being unrecognizable. Being a nice guy, Dome offered to turn the pair into demons and save them, proceeding to give them his blood to initiate their transformation. He challenges them to become powerful enough to be recognized by that man, and to become an upper rank in the 12 Kazuki. At some point, Domo became upper rank 2, surpassing upper rank 3, Akaza, despite becoming a demon more recently than him. Fifteen years prior to the present, Doma had a brief history with Inosuke Hashibira. His mother, Kotoha Hashibira, escaped from her abusive household with his father and found refuge in the Paradise Faith cult. Although Doma considered Kotoha stupid, her beauty and singing talent convinced Doma not to consume her and simply let her live her life. However, she discovered he is devouring other followers and fled from the temple with Inosuke in her arms. Before she could be killed, she dropped Inosuke off a cliff into a river in hopes he would survive. Doma shortly caught up with them and proceeded to swiftly kill her and mock Inosuke for his fate, before eating Katoha to the very bones. A few years before the present, he encountered and fought Kanei Kocho. He mortally wounded her, but was forced to retreat from the Rising Sun before he could devour her. At the gathering of the upper ranks, Doma questions Akasa's lack of concern for him, placing a hand on his colleague's shoulder. He expresses his worry for his comrade's safety, before engaging Gyoko in small talk about his bot and the one that he had been given. An irritated Akaza tells Doma to move his hand, punching him when he didn't immediately comply. Regenerating the damage almost instantly, Doma compliments his fellow upper rank, wondering if he had gotten stronger since their last meeting. Soon after, Muzan arrived, and upper rank 2 listened as his leader reported Gyotaro's death. Doma apologizes, being the one who has introduced him to the 12 Kazuki. He claims responsibility for his failure and eagerly wonders what kind of punishment Muzan would inflict on him, but is instead told that nothing is expected of him. The eccentric Doma questions this, but Muzan pointed out the continued existence of the Ubiyashiki family, and the failure to find the blue spider lily causes Doma to concede that he isn't the best at detective work. He later approached Gyoko, eager to accompany him on his new mission, but had the top half of his head destroyed by Akaza for not following their leader's orders. Doma swiftly regenerates from this and attempts to placate Kokushibo, who had cut off Akaza's hand for disrupting the hierarchy. Hearing that it hadn't been for his benefit, Doma noted that Kokushibo's suggestion that Akaza should apply for a bloody battle would be a waste of time, given their difference in strength and that he hadn't dodged Akaza's blow on purpose. He then cheerfully bid Kokushibo goodbye, again attempting to engage Akaza in conversation and once more tried to join Gyoko and Hantengu on their mission, failing on both accounts. He attempts to flirt with Nakime, only to be rejected and transported back to his master room in the Paradise Faith Cult. Upon being told that his followers had arrived, Doma quickly put on a ceremonial hat and instructs the messenger to bring them in. As he is consuming a group of his female disciples inside Nakime's Infinity Castle, Doma notices Shinobu at the entrance to his room. He reacts with delight at having another meal walk right into his room. One of his disciples, still alive, begs Shinobu to save her, and Doma, irritated by this, attempts to finish her off, only for Shinobu to jump in and save her. She asks the young woman if she is alright, but before she can answer Shinobu's question, the young woman explodes and dies right in front of her eyes. Angered by this and Doma's insistence that he saved the girl by killing her, Shinobu notices a pair of sharp fans that Doma uses as his main weapon and angrily inquires if he remembers the Hayori that originally belonged to her elder sister. Doma finally remembers her by the butterfly wing design Hayori that Kanei once wore, and playfully expresses his disappointment at not being able to eat Kanei due to the sun rising, further angering Shinobu. The insect Hashira swiftly launches an attack at him, using her to inflict a powerful stab directly into Doma's right eyeball, which impresses him since he couldn't block it. He correctly guesses that she lacks the physical strength to cut off a demon's head, and becomes excited upon learning that Shinobu's true strength lies in her use of various poisons to kill her opponents. Shinobu initially hoped that the first dosage of poison she injected into him would be effective enough to kill him, but then learns, much to her disappointment, that Doma had already received information regarding her poison from her battle against the spider family of lower rank 5. Doma then manages to break down and render her poison non-lethal, healing himself from her attack. 
She is further backed into a corner due to Doma's rapid development of antibodies. After a mere five slashes and injections of poison, he is not resistant to it entirely. Also, due to his blood demon art of frozen mist, the air around the room they are fighting in is growing gradually colder, causing it to become increasingly difficult for Shinobu to breathe. Hedging her bets on one last attack, Shinobu strikes using insect breathing, Dance of the Dragonfly, and successfully hits him. However, as she strikes, he simultaneously strikes her, cutting both her collarbone and ribs, puncturing one of her lungs. Shinobu, in a near-death state, almost losing every hope in victory, attempts to draw strength from replaying her older sister's words of encouragement in her head. Shinobu then prepares to strike at Doma again, despite her serious injuries and the immense pain she is in, and attacks him again using insect breathing, Dance of the Centipede. She strikes Doma directly through his neck, impaling him and sending him flying towards the ceiling. Exhausted and wounded, Shinobu is relieved upon seeing Doma poisoned and seemingly dying from her attack. However, Doma recovers almost instantly, by which Shinobu is further enraged. Now exhausted, fatally injured, and dangerously near death, Shinobu is caught by Doma as they were falling down from the ceiling. He embraces her in a bear hug and begins mocking her for calling her entire attempt to defeat him a waste of effort, assuring her she will live peacefully as a part of him, and mockingly asking her for her last words. She spitefully curses him as he begins to kill her. Doma breaks Shinobu's body in his arms and begins to absorb her, just as her disciple Kaneo Suyuri arrives at the scene. But just before her death, she manages to send a mysterious signal to her successor with her hand. Her death causes Kaneo to go berserk in order to try to save her, only to be repelled by an irritated Doma who tells her not to interfere when he's in the middle of absorbing someone. He successfully devours Shinobu's body until her butterfly-shaped hairpiece is the only thing left of her. Doma notes aloud that Kaneo must have been told something by the signal Shinobu gave her shortly before her death, wondering what it could be, as Kaneo stands silently before him, enraged. As he licks Shinobu's hairpin, he says that it is a good night, as such fine meals keep showing up one after another. After Akasa's death, Doma says that he felt as if the upper rank had turned into a different creature before he died, and that his demise was inevitable because he never ate any women. Doma begins to cry over his best friend's death, but Kaneo just tells him to stop with the lies. She explains that she knows every word that comes out of his mouth is nothing but random babble, and that it's impossible for him to be genuinely sad over Akaza because he can't feel anything at all. She says that every person born into the world has feelings, but Doma cannot understand these feelings and covers them up by spitting lies. He has never felt happiness, joy, pain, and bitterness. He is nothing but an empty shell. She also asks Doma why he was even born. Doma's face turns serious, and he asks how Kaneo can say something so cruel, to which the young Demon Slayer responds that she simply hates him and wants to send him to hell this instant. Suddenly, Doma appears behind Kaneo, attempting to use one of his fans to cut her head off, but she quickly dodges and delivers a blow to his stomach, causing some of his organs to fall out. He doesn't seem to feel her blow, simply sending some of his ice lotuses at her and noting that her reaction speed has increased as she's able to adapt to his attacks. As he regenerates his body, he thinks to himself that Kaneo could actually be stronger than Shinobu, a Hashira. Trying to suppress her rage, Kaneo attacks Doma with her flower breathing, which he avoids with ease, smiling and commenting on how pretty her attack is, before launching his blood demon art at her, which she barely fends off. Doma notices that the main reason why she is able to counter and dodge his attacks is because of her immensely keen eyesight. Kaneo herself is able to easily predict and guess his every move due to taking note of the subtle movements of his shoulders, gaze, toes, elbows, and knees. Having figured out the reason for her reflexes and reactions, Doma decides that the best course of action would be to simply take her eyes out with the swing of his fans. However, Kaneo successfully dodges his attack and charges at him with flower breathing which is nullified by Doma's blood demon art. The upper rank sends two more attacks, Lotus Vines and Cold White Princesses, which she only just avoids before his wintry icicles begin to rain on her from above. Kaneo dodges again, moving further away from the demon, who laughs at her and says that she can't keep moving backward if she wants to cut his head off. Quicker than the blink of an eye, Doma runs at Kaneo and snatches her blade, returning and planting it into the ground a distance away from her. He says that she better come and get it quickly if she wants to continue fighting him, before sending his blood demon art at the Demon Slayer. At that moment, Inosuke breaks through the ceiling of the room, protecting Kaneo from Doma's attack with his beast breathing. He looks at Doma's eyes and notices that he's the upper rank too, happily shouting that if he beats the demon, he'll become a Hashira, and asking Kaneo what his Hashira title should be. Inosuke notices Kaneo's beaten up face and asks, surprised, what had happened, saying that Shinobu will get mad if she finds her Sukuko in that state. Kaneo remains silent, and the boar-headed demon slayer asks if Shinobu is dead to which Doma replies that she isn't. She will live inside him for all eternity, because he has saved her from her pain and suffering. Inosuke recalls Shinobu's kindness towards him, and vows to Doma that he'll kill him, as he rushes towards the upper rank with his beast breathing. Kaneo shouts out, 
warning him not to breathe in Doma's cold air as the demon remarks at how messed up his technique is. Doma attempts to slice off Inosuke's head with one of his fans, but the Demon Slayer dodges, launching himself from the flat edge of the fan and landing next to Kaneo. He hands Kaneo her blade, which he had taken back from Doma, and tells her to never let go of it again. Doma smiles and compliments Inosuke's speed as he jumps towards him, and the two engage in quick combat, launching breathing styles and blood demon arts at each other at alarming rates. Inosuke kicks Doma in the stomach, sending him skidding backwards as he dislocates the joints in his right arm and prepares to swing a sword at the upper rank's neck. He misjudges his swing and instead slices through Doma's eye with his beast breathing, while the demon laughs at his unusual technique. Doma calls Inosuke messed up and says that he's never met a kid like him before, despite his long lifespan, to which the demon slayer replies that that's obvious since he's the great Inosuke. At an incredible speed, Doma runs forward and snatches the mask from his head as he's speaking, and Inosuke, enraged, tells him to give it back. The Demon Slayer notices his face and says that he remembers Inosuke from somewhere, asking him if they'd met before. Inosuke responds that they hadn't, as he would remember meeting someone like Doma. But the upper rank insists that they have, proceeding to stick his fingers through his skull and into his brain to try and jog his memories. Doma says that he knew Inosuke's mother, as his cult took her in, but Inosuke denies that he has a mother, since he was raised by boars. Doma laughs and says that he must have a human mother, since he's a human and Sanosuke shouts at him to quit spouting lies and give him back his boar mask, rushing in to attack the demon again with his beast breathing. His torso is slashed twice by Doma's fans, who smiles shyly and tells him not to interrupt him, before sending him back flying to Kaneo with his ice. Doma then tells the story of Katoha, Inosuke's mother. Memories of her begin to come back to Inosuke, who recalls the song she used to sing to him. Doma calls Katoha stupid and unfortunate, saying that there isn't a happy moment in her life. And Inosuke, now enraged, thanks Doma for allowing him to remember this story and promises not only to kill him for what he did to Katoha and Shinobu, but to put him through hell beforehand. Doma smiles again and tells Inosuke that there is no heaven or hell in this world, since they're nothing but fantasies created as a coping mechanism for weak humans. Inosuke shouts that he doesn't care if there's no hell, because he can just make one himself, and tells Doma not to talk about his mother. The demon sends his freezing clouds at Inosuke, which he blows away with beast breathing, as Kaneo prepares to use another breath style to attack him from behind. Doma bats her away with one of his fans and moves away, as Inosuke yells at him to get back down so they can continue fighting. He replies that he can't, since Akaza has been defeated and he doesn't have time to play anymore. He uses his blood demon art, Crystalline Divine Child, to create smaller clones of himself for Inosuke and Kaneo to fight instead. The clones attack the Demon Slayer duo with Doma's techniques, as the real Doma starts to walk away. Now at the exit, Doma thinks about how Inosuke managed to avoid breathing in the icy air from his techniques, and takes note of his sharp senses, saying that he will make sure to remember him. He spectates the battle for a few seconds, closely observing how they each use their techniques so that he'll be able to kill them quickly the next time they fight. Doma decides to create three more clones and let them roam free around the castle in order to kill the rest of the Demon Slayers there. He overhears Kaneo shouting to Inosuke that they have to hold their ground just a little bit longer and wonders what this could mean, but then dismisses it and begins to reach for the door handle. Suddenly, Doma's face begins to melt. He drops to the floor, one of his arms snapping off, and his crystal children begin to crack and disintegrate as he wonders what's happening. Inosuke asks if it's a trap, but Kaneo, having been informed prior to the battle of Shinobu's plan to kill Doma, tells him that it isn't, and that the demon is being melted by the poison Shinobu had in their body when he consumed her. She tells Inosuke to aim for his neck to finish him off, and in a panic, Doma plays his final and most powerful card, Blood Demon Art, Rhyme, Water Lily Bodhisattva. Doma's Ice Bodhisattva statue slams his hand down on the floor, creating a small earthquake that sends Inosuke and Kaneo up into the air. Kaneo notes that his technique lacks precision, and is clearly the demon's last effort to protect himself with the little energy he had left, deciding to use her final form, Flower Breathing. Final form, Equinoctial Vermilion Eye, to try and break through to him. Doma's statue grabs Inosuke as Kaneo leaps towards the upper rank, hitting her blade against his neck. She is unable to cut it, so Inosuke, on the spot, comes up with a new technique and throws his blades at Kaneo to give it the extra strength needed to cut Doma's neck. They succeed in beheading him, and the upper rank too and his statue begin to disintegrate. As his head falls to the floor, Doma thinks about how pathetic he must be to have lost to a poisoner like Shinobu, someone who didn't even have the strength to kill a demon by cutting its head. He thinks to himself that he shouldn't give up, and he should try and regenerate his head as Akasa almost did, but soon comes to realize that it would be futile, and that he is going to die. In his final moments, Doma says that he is not afraid of death, or even frustrated that he had lost, and recalls his past as a human and his inability to feel any emotion. Now in the afterlife, Doma opens his eyes to Shinobu, who is holding his severed head in one hand. She asks if he's finally dead, and says that she can now rest in peace. 
Doma asks her if her name is Shinobu or Kani, and she says that it doesn't really matter because he makes her sick, and she doesn't want him to say her name anyway. He ignores this, going on to compliment her for her poisoning skills, and expresses surprise at not noticing that it had circulated through him before it was too late. And she smiles, and explains that a demon called Tamiyo helped her make it. Shinobu says that she is frustrated that she couldn't kill him herself, and the fact that she can no longer help the Demon Slayers defeat Muzan, but she is still satisfied with the result. Doma gives her a look, and Shinobu asks what's wrong, to which the demon says that he feels like his heart is beating, and wonders if he has fallen in love. He thinks aloud that if love really exists, heaven and hell must too, and asks Shinobu if she wants to go to hell together with him. But she tells him to piss off and calls him a worthless bastard. Click on this video, where we explain the entire story of Muzan Kibutsuji. Don't be shy, click it.